Yo, what's good? Welcome back to the Interstellar Audio Podcast. Today, I'm joined by none other than Peter Piper, Mr. Overview, the man himself. I was really blessed to get to spend some time with Peter. We talked about all things overview, all things party, and all things drum and bass. So fill up your brew, take a seat, get comfortable. For the next 90 minutes, you'll be locked into IA. So, Pete, thank you very much for joining me again, mate. It's good to see you. How is life? Uh, life do be lifing at the moment, that is what I will say. Yeah, things have been things have been pretty pretty hectic, especially in the last like sort of twelve months. Uh, I had a child. Congrats. I know you've got you've got you've got a couple, right? I got a squad, mate, yeah, I've got three, yeah. Three? Yeah. Jesus. I've got a while <laughs> to catch up. I've got a while to catch up there. You're doing fine. How you find her? Um, tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, don't be wrong. It's, it's like the most amazing thing that I've ever done. But damn, it's it's hard work. It is hard work. Well, it was one of the things I was going to ask you about, was to be fair, was how you balance being a dad and the music industry lifestyle, because they are not conducive to each other, are they? Uh, I'm going to say not very well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's it's one of those things... I'm still kind of like finding my feet with it, I guess. It's something new that I've never had to do. Yeah, you know, you go through life like, you know, you, it's, you, you're you only responsible for yourself, really. Like, you, I, I, you, you know, I, don't, I didn't realize until I had a child that sort of freedom I had and, you know, I could do what I want when I wanted, within reason, obviously. But now things are definitely not that way. No, it's uh, it's taking a bit of figuring out because... As you say, it's not the easiest career to have to like to to I mean there's good there's good points and bad points to it for sure. The bad points probably being that I'm away quite a lot of weekends, things like that, because there's a lot of traveling involved in in being in drum and bass. The positives are that I you know, where I work for myself, I'm able to be around possibly a bit more during the week and have a bit more control over my schedule so I can help out a bit more with childcare when needed. So yeah, like it's it's been um it's been an experience. It's been real highs and lows uh doing it. I wouldn't change anything at all. And uh yeah, he's coming up one, he's gonna be one next month and it's just flown by. It is actually mad how quick like time has gone especially in this last year since since he's been here but uh, it's something i'm still figuring out i need to probably meet a few more people in the industry that do have kids and kind of get some pointers and some tips off them because yeah it's uh it's definitely a unique challenge and obviously you know it's, a, it's an industry full of a lot of young people that don't have children <laughs> Uh, people can't really relate you know i'm sort of one of the first people in my sort of uh my sort of social circle the child to be honest so yeah I, you know i still need to sort of find a few more people i guess out there like yourself well i mean yeah i'm not sure i've got any wisdom to offer but i'm happy to chat i think one thing that i'm seeing is that now people are naturally getting older right so people like yourself are getting to the age where they're maybe going to have a kid and there's starting to be that way like Tolomic's got a kid that's similar age to you and obviously I've got a couple of little ones as well and I think at the moment but we will probably get a bit of osmosis going and a bit of a critical mass soon and people will start to to, to think oh, okay this kid's going around here how do we do this how do we do that I know from my point of view like day raves are so much more attractive to me now than 6am finishes are um, and it's just those little adjustments where you try and balance it that I've enjoyed doing as I've ended up with three running around the house but like you would change it it's fun and um it's nice to have that kind of thing to come home to on a sunday morning when you know you've had a busy night last night but you come home to a nice family sunday dinner that's all right I don't mind that. or it can also be the other side where you'd be like oh my god i'm so I like I'm tired <laughs> i just want to go to bed and this child is like pulling on my leg you know <laughs> yeah. um so no, no it's been you know it's been uh you know in general it's been an amazing thing to have done and and obviously, he is the heir now to the Overview Throne, and he is going to be a Nepo baby. 
uh tim uh doing royalties soon uh you know doing the kind of like busy body sort of stuff we'll, we'll, we'll start him in the trenches first and then we'll, he'll like move his way up in the business i mean he, he doesn't have a choice he he, he is going to be working for overview before he realizes <laughs> <laughs> flyering at 3 a.m <laughs> yeah 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 well you know that's actually i'm gonna write that one down that's a, that's a good that's a good one add it to this well it's a good a uh, good opportunity for me to say so in case i'm sure most people who listen to this know exactly who you are but in case people don't know who you are you just mentioned overview obviously peter piper who is peter piper and what is overview peter piper i don't know who peter piper is peter piper is a character uh but i, I mean so i am a record label owner dj kind of all round uh busy body kind of behind the scenes i've done a few more front facing sort of things if people follow overview music then more than likely they know who i am and yeah so i've been sort of involved in drum and bass for about 14 years doing various sort of things and yeah i'm kind of like as i said running overview music with my label partner ollie subantics and we are just kind of like pushing overview at the moment in the scene and yeah that's kind of like the <laughs> the short the short answer um because you mentioned that you've been in the scene for a while so how how did you go or like where did you get in and how did that naturally become overview like how, where does overview come from what's the genesis story uh i mean there's a long there's a long answer there's a short answer um i mean basically i kind of I tried various different projects along the way. Uh, I kind of started kind of like a a brand when I was about 19, 20. And that was probably like the kind of like early iteration of Overview. Uh, it was called South Coast Vibes, which was, uh, I mean, this was like the early era of YouTube and kind of like the real transition where you know youtube was was very new soundcloud was very new like the whole concept of like digital music was kind of still was still new like you know vinyl was still very much like probably like the tail end of vinyl digital starting to take over and and these kind of like the the landscape changing within drum and bass and i kind of like jumped on that wave at that time and I tried to sort of start a brand, didn't quite work out, uh, but I was kind of like, that gave me like an initial like launch pad or kind of understanding of how things could sort of work in terms of like promoting. I was getting mixes from people, promoting tracks on, on, on YouTube. I tried to do some event photography and I had very big ambitions. Actually, I actually had very big ambitions for this project and it never quite sort of took off and and then yeah sort of over the over time i sort of then tried to launch some various different things as well i started my own uh brand in my own town i kind of wanted to get into event promoting uh i kind of i kind of threw quite an infamous party when i was at university which actually got me kicked out of university uh in the end um <laughs> because it went that it went that terribly uh that was so kind of terribly like, in their eyes or terribly in the attendees eyes i was terrible no no it was terrible i mean it, it was one of the most amazing parties that i've probably ever been to it was like a project x style house party where we put uh we put a six stack speaker system inside one of the one of the rooms in the student accommodation and basically put the postcode on facebook and about three to four hundred people came and it was probably i think it was definitely the most stupid thing that i've ever done probably by quite a distance to be honest i mean i'm very fortunate that like it didn't go worse than it did i'm very fortunate we, we didn't burn the house down or someone die like it was like that extreme and yeah that was kind of like my that was like the first party that i ever put on and I got, we invited a lot of drum and bass DJs down from Brighton because it was, it was on the South Coast in Worthing. Yeah. So this was like my first taste of it. Like 
I mean, it, it was an amazing experience. It also was very bad in terms of things got very out of hand. The ceiling fell through. The entire front of the house got smashed with bricks and it kind of i thought i i thought i was going to die like i genuinely thought that i was going to die uh so that that wasn't like that was like yeah like the 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 good side of the bad side of it but as i said that was kind of like my first taste of throwing a party and after that i was kind of known as like the guy that threw the party yeah after that i then sort of started getting more involved in the drum and bass scene down in down in brighton and kind of wanted to then do my own parties after that because it was like, well, I'm the party guy. I, you know, I'll, I'll throw, I'll throw some parties, and I threw some in my own town because at the time we all had to go to Brighton rather than there wasn't anything in Horsham where I'm from. Yeah, so that was kind of like the start of it. I kind of really that was the first thing I ever did was was throw parties, and I just I was always the guy that. Yeah, made things happen. Uh, I guess like I, I've always enjoyed bringing people together and having a good time. And it takes a certain kind of person to be in that position because most people just want to either play tunes or they just want to turn up and drink. Like you, you know, to actually go through the whole kind of like months of organization or you know, and, and the promotion and the stress like that is not for everybody. And I don't blame people for not wanting to do that. But I, for whatever reason, I, I really enjoyed it and, and I still enjoy it. And that's really where, where I first sort of started started things. And like I said, then, because I was a, well, I, I am a graphic designer and an artist, kind of first and foremost, that was kind of where my other background and my other sort of passion was. And I was able to kind of, yeah, as I said, make things happen because I could design, I could create. And for me, it was like, it was like another canvas uh to to create a brand or to create events and, and that was kind of like the early early iterations of it and i mean yeah long story long story short i then sort of got involved with uh youtube promotion i was still sort of doing events in my town uh then the label lifestyle music uh came to horsham basically the guy that ran that uh, moved to moved to Horsham and I'd already sort of met him and knew him and basically he was kind of looking for someone and I was looking for a new challenge and I was kind of like in the perfect position to kind of be involved in a record label I'd I'd sort of already had experience with promotion obviously events I had a network within the scene where because I I, I joined a channel I joined a YouTube channel it was like the era of YouTube promotion and I was able you know I contacted you know I built up this network of artists and labels and whoever and so when this label turned up in Horsham it was like right you know I could really do something to help them and, and it was a fun challenge it was like the challenge I was like waiting for so it's very very coincidental that it kind of happened I didn't it wasn't like I started my own record label in that respect. Uh, you know, this this opportunity came and we joined up and I joined them and I kind of, I was then taking over the graphic design full time. I was doing most of, you know, a lot of the promotion, doing, you know, started ev arranging events and things started to really take off and lifestyle kind of, was on its way to becoming quite a successful record label. Uh, we then <laughs> we then ended up uh, kind of having a big falling out. It didn't end too well. It was a bit public and a bit crap. And I was kind of like, kind of basically kicked out <laughs> of the record label. There's a bit of a running. There's a bit of a running theme here. You could probably tell already. Like uh, you know, me getting kicked out of things uh, has been a little bit of a story of my life in general so far um and yeah so i basically found myself in a position where i didn't have a record label i basically had nothing i had i was like what one one day i had my whole future ahead of me and then the next i was completely out on my ass but i had obviously built up this experience over a number of years and that was kind of like the catalyst for 
starting overview music didn't it? yeah i'm sure there's some untellable stories in there as well and, and not to make you dwell on what happened at lifestyle but it kind of almost sounds like the tipping point there is when you go from a fun project to a business things can sometimes get a bit messy is that is that valid or is it not really a right interpretation of that situation yeah i, I would say i would say that's definitely an interpretation of it because you know when we when when i when i first joined lifestyle it was certainly they saying it was a fun project it wasn't there wasn't a lot of pressure i mean to be honest with you the label was in quite a dire place when he moved to horsham and he wasn't you know it was it could have it could have folded very easily and i kind of i kind of came in and was kind of the one that kind of helped turn it around obviously that's my my version of the story but but i certainly do believe that and then yeah like as i said it started having success and it did start to turn from this kind of fun thing to like, oh shit, like this is actually, you know, there's actually something here now. This is actually going to be quite, you know, this is, we've now got a lot of people watching. It's now got all of what's a lot more serious. And, and, and essentially it was, it was around sort of like power and control because I didn't start it. I didn't start it. And I wanted to be very much kind of level pegging with it because i felt that i deserved it and i felt that i yeah that i'd worked so hard for it and i was so important to the project that that's what i that's what my terms were should we say and the terms weren't really reciprocated and yeah that was kind of kind of what what kind of caused the riff and yeah it's a shame it's a real shame because as i said we had a real good thing going and a lot of people really loved that label we put out some fantastic music around that time. It, this was about 2015 to 2018. I would say it was like the real kind of like peak, peak, peak lifestyle. And yeah, we did some special projects. We we went to Australia. We did a whole album project for Australia. We put out some of the first releases from Signal, from Clinical, from Ill Truth, like, you know, some some people that have really gone on to do some amazing things we were like right there uh and we couldn't keep it together but <laughs> it was kind of a blessing in disguise to be honest because i certainly wouldn't change how things have gone well we ended up with overview as a result of that so from from at least from my point of view that's a positive thing and i was going to say how do you were there learnings that you took from that experience or, or things that you took forward into form a for, into the formation of overview to kind of I wouldn't say protect against that same experience again, but to, to just kind of take that learning forward and shape how things might be different in the overview sense. I mean, I think it it kind of showed me that I really needed to be kind of in charge, to be honest. I mean, you know, obviously, I mean, now, you know, I do work with, with Ollie and we, we, have a, we have a certain relationship and dynamic. I mean, things have definitely changed a lot more now, five years later to where they were when we first started. I mean, yeah, honestly, like the, the lessons I learned from that were a lot. I mean, again, again, what you could lose, you know, nothing in life is is certain and you could be so sure of something happening and be almost blinded by that. And and yet you can lose it like and, and you know, years of work just go down the drain, uh, which was something that I'd not properly experienced in that same way. So it certainly taught me certain things and, and and fundamentally to be kind of in a position where you're kind of able to control your own destiny in, in, in a certain respect. Like that's kind of now what I've certainly tried to implement with, with what I do. Yeah. If you rely, if you have to rely on, on too many other people or there's other people that control your kind of fate or, I mean, different people want different things, I guess. And, and some people are happy to be, you know, that not everyone wants to be a leader. Like not everyone wants to be in charge, but I've always felt very suited to that role. And yeah. And then it kind of, it forced me to have to do it. And, and now I don't, you know, I don't have to kind of answer to anybody really. I mean, I've, I've, I do answer to Ollie, <laughs> you know, if we, you know, we answer to each other and we keep each other in check. I mean, we've got a very, we've got a very good dynamic but yeah I, you know i i'm in i'm in i'm in control i'm in i'm in charge of it and that enables me to not have to worry like i don't have to worry about 
the only person is is me like the only person you know that I have to sort of worry about to a degree obviously there's the artist but it's 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 my my mistakes my my errors or my successes or whatever that that's what matters should we say for 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 what I do and it's it's the position that I needed to be in a lot earlier um it took a while to get there but yeah we're here now and and yeah it's been a pretty pretty wild sort of I mean we're now sort of over five years approaching our sixth year yeah and then just so much has happened in that time and we're going to be approaching 100 releases coming up uh this the end of this year and I just yeah I'm just sort of going with it it's it's like it was never it was never the plan it was it was never a hundred percent what what I thought I was going to be doing but yeah you just have to sort of learn to adapt and roll with the punches and and sort of never give up that kind of very dogged desire because it's you know it's a it's a it's a tough industry you know the, the the music industry is a is a can be a very cutthroat place and you know especially when you're trying to do sort of like underground drum and bass it's you know it's not you know big big numbers big figures you know you're not selling out stadiums and and you know making hundreds of thousands of pounds like it's it's very you know it's it's not you know it, it can be tough it can be really tough and and to sort of like have that you know resilience is so important and certainly going through an experience like that yeah it gave me that gave me that ability and you know, gave me that resilience mm. so i think it's it's fully valid you talk about that you know we're working in an area of the industry that's niche in itself and in some ways you could say niche of a niche, because you know, dance music and then drum and bass, and then even more niche in the fact that the sound that Overview is about is is very specific and it does sit right at the top of that underground sound, but it is it is underground in that respect. And so if you're not doing it because you want to be doing it, it's very quickly gonna get tiresome because it's hard to determine what success is. You know, success is such small marginal gains that it's it's something that's difficult to get excited about unless you're just naturally like in love with it. But it does feel very much like your, what you've told me about your journey towards it. You've kind of, over time, like tick tallied up the different skills that you might need to run a label, and you've kind of become this complete package of you know graphic. You talk about graphic design, you talk about running events, you talk about promotion, you talk about all that kind of stuff. So it makes me wonder. You know, you're very much the figurehead of Overview. You're the you're the face we see. You know, Ollie is not so much the, the face we see behind the scenes how does the work delineate like where do your responsibilities sit each of you how do you manage what's going on behind the scenes uh i mean it's just a lot of communication and yeah well, i mean we we talk every single day it doesn't you know it's never felt like a chore or it it feels very natural in 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 some respects it's like oh yeah wake up message ollie what's he doing what's going on i, I guess over time certain things have changed like from certain roles that maybe i had five years ago to what ollie had five years ago yeah it's, it's an ever-evolving thing as you know as this kind of business is growing like you know yeah well, i mean we do you know we're releasing so much more music now we're putting on so many more events now like you know we've, we've even got people that now kind of work with us as well we've got uh, a guy called harry hdr who is kind of like He's kind of like my label assistant, our label assistant, which is kind of like, yeah, that's kind of like a real uh, privilege. You know, he's really great. And I'm kind of like, teach, you know, building him up because it's that thing of like moving responsibility, removing, moving jobs over so I can focus on what I need to focus on, the bigger things that are going to really help move things forward rather than getting too caught up in the kind of yeah the kind of menial more menial side of it because it can there is some real like boring as as i'm sure you know sure you know you know it's it you know comes across as this like very glamorous uh or it can be you know rock and roll uh life and and there's certainly sides to it that is that but there's also like there's also data entry and soundcloud backend and label engine and do your own your own your own you know yeah no it really is and 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 like the stress you know and and you know constantly having to keep up with people and talk to people and and chase people up like there's so many i i mean i've almost sort of joked before that i am like a professional nagger because it is like 
when's when's this release finished when when you know what what's going on here what you know when it when it you know are you free on this day when it, you know what all the you know all this stuff you know it's just constantly kind of chasing and chasing and chasing and it you know and it can be yeah really you know really tiring um but yeah you know we we just have as i said like for for what the kind of roles are it's just sort of been this sort of natural evolution over time i mean i'm i'm very much kind of events is very much my my bag probably more so than ollie i mean i do a you know i do a fair bit of the the artwork and and that kind of side of things still as well we do have some other people that kind of help us with that um ollie is very much the the video animator between us uh he is a he's actually a professional animator which uh definitely helps uh you know so between me and him we can basically do everything together uh you know i can design the artwork he can do the videos and it helps keep the costs very much down to 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 most record labels to be honest unless obviously you can you know people do you know are able to do that do that themselves but we can we can deliver we can deliver things of a very high standard i think that's the thing as well it's like it's not just like we're like learning on with YouTube tutorials or you know or thing or things like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean you know look, look, look you've got to start somewhere. Like you know I, that's where you know that's where I started. For me, that's what it was about. It was like I'd I'd like to spend my free time learning to do these things, and I'd like to spend my free time doing music stuff. So you put it together, and it just works. So. I get it, but there's a there's leagues between where my label's at and where your label's at. You know, you're definitely front running in terms of the the product that you put out is visually spot on as well as sound spot on, and you know the brand is complete. Like when you we talk in the back end all the time about like fucking how these overview YouTube videos are great, and who do the fuck do they get to do all their animation because it's so good, and this artwork's always so banging. Like how can they afford all this? Like what you know. So it it shows, and what, and to know that you're doing that in house is just even more inspiring because it proves that that kind of like in house multi talented do what you can yourself mentality can succeed to that sort of upper echelons of where, of where the scene's at right now. So I've got mad respect for that approach, man. Well done, you've, you've worked that for ages. But you know, I have been graphic, you know, been a graphic designer probably for like twenty years at this point. You know, and it just takes time. You know, it just takes time and learning and. Yeah, you know, I'm, I've always been a very, you know, big believer in the DIY, you know, trying to find a way to do it, do it yourself, like, if you can, you know, and, it, and that's the thing, especially when it comes to the, mon- the mon- monetary side of it, because, like, you know, labels can be, you know, they can be big money pits, you know, you can end up sort of spending a lot of money, and when sometimes there's not great money in it, in terms of, like, how many records you'll sell on Bandcamp or or even on Beatport or like how many streams you'll get on Spotify and it barely covers you know it can barely cover what you know what your costs are and it's you know you know and you can end up spending you know you go to like professional design agencies to get animation or something and you can spend hundreds you know if not thousands you know on that on that just for one release so I've always been a believer in the DIY model and you know, don't be wrong, we do sort of still, you know, there are things that we will maybe indulge a bit more in to be like, well, we want to go to this particular artist or do something a bit bigger and a bit different. We don't have to do that every time. And and sometimes there is like, there's like months where we're like, we really need to save some money this month. So I'll just do the artwork, you know, Ollie will do the animation, you know, and we'll save the costs. And, and, and you know, and that's the same for the events as well. You know, I pretty much do design all of the artwork for pretty much every every overview show. That's still something very much that I do. So again, it's just like these these ways to be able to save money, which help with the longevity, I guess. It's interesting that you focus on longevity. And I'll ask, but you don't have to answer. We don't have to go down this road if we don't want to. But I want, I want to ask you if we can go behind the curtain a bit. Because you mentioned three people that work for the label. I know what the what my experience of the finances of running a label is. I accept that's not in the same league as you, but behind the curtain, it, the, <laughs> how the fuck do you do it? <laughs> well, how the fuck do you afford it? Basically, how does the label sustain itself, or do you guys have to have outside money generation that you then invest into the label continuously? 
that is probably my my big my big next challenge at the moment you know for, for most of the duration of the label we've we've always put the label first like me and ollie we don't draw a wage like a full wage out of the label and we we haven't done i mean especially for the, for the first like i'd say two to three years we, we didn't pay ourselves pretty much at all just to obviously like reinvest you know our, our ambition was to reinvest back into the label you know i had you know i had a part-time job i was working in a bar or or whatever you know to to just sort of like supplement my costs i mean i do i do freelance work as well so i work quite closely with the volks nightclub down in brighton so i do quite a bit of work with them so and and ollie has a full-time job ollie actually still has a full-time job you know in animation on the side of it so yeah we're we're sort of like far from you know being full full time a hundred percent in it i'm probably more full time than than ollie is at the moment i mean well <laughs> i say that i mean he, he does put an awful lot of time in i mean he puts a crazy amount of time in obviously he's got his full-time job and and obviously running overview as well so i i dread to think i mean i i i don't i don't look at the hours i don't i don't keep a keep a track of that sort of thing because i feel like if i did it would probably be quite depressing if i was like so you know how much am i actually making per hour here it's it's way below minimum wage you know so that so it, you know, there is that there is that side of it you know even even as a label to like where we're at but we're still very early in our in our in our sort of development i mean that's what i you know what i have to believe and what i tell myself because yes we're, we're six years old and yes you know we have played these these certain shows and we we're selling you know fairly decent amounts of music and streaming pretty well but it you know it's not generating crazy money you know i'm not you know because a lot of labels you know are usually backed by you know a big name dj you know and i could name ho however many labels so usually the label is kind of like the passion project you know the the fees that they get for their sets is kind of what pays for their life and the label is kind of like this thing that it kind of generates the interest and it generates the publicity and it can make a bit of money like don't be wrong like it's not like it makes nothing but it's certainly usually not crazy amounts that is going to be able to pay for a mortgage should we say so obviously a lot of people supplement it with their sets. I'm not in a position where I make great money off of DJing yet. I mean, it, that would be a nice dream, but I don't know 100% of that's going to totally happen for me or not. And I can't, and I'm not going to like rely on it. So look, you know, that, like I said, I mean, going back to it, you know, it it is still quite a struggle or it's it, things are very tight. Like, and that's probably my next sort of big challenge at the moment is to kind of figure out how can I make this profitable and how can I make this actually like be able to really support me so I can live comfortably because at the moment like it, it's kind of it's kind of just about there but it's still you know I still have to do these other things to get more money in Ollie is still needing to work his second job you know it's not quite there yet but with the way that it's going and with the trajectory that it's on I'm fully confident that it will happen. It is just a matter of time and it is just it was still putting in the work. And and that's kind of what I have to, you know, what we have to believe. And and that's the payoff. That's going to be like the payoff for, you know, putting in the work now and obviously taking a bit of a cut, taking, you know, not earning as much out of it to hopefully within, you know, by by 10 years of overview, or you know or whatever i mean i look at some of these other labels you know they, they're approaching 20 years 25 years you know 30 years you know we're six years you know we're we're, we're still only just getting started really uh, and i and i intend to be you know i fully intend to be here for for that long like i hope i hope so i mean look you know i have got no idea what the future may hold but at the moment like that's it's what i love and I'll, it's what i really really enjoy and i yeah i mean that's you know that's the idea so you know hopefully you know it could set set us up in a place where 
you know, will be able to provide a decent life or it will, and, it, and maybe that it'll be able to do that for more than just us. Like I, you know, again, I look at some other labels, you know, they employ, you know, five, 10 people, you know, I mean, hospital records employs like 30 or 40 people. And, and then it's got stuff like Solvent running underneath it. And, you know, there's all that kind of wider, wider reaches as well, isn't there? Yeah, the, you know, that's the thing. It's like, you know, you, as you move up the ladder and, and obviously grow certain different sides of the business, you know, there are things that I know that we could be doing better, uh, you know, that could help obviously bring in a, some more money. Uh, not that it should all completely re- revolve around money. Uh, but sustainability, like longevity, all that. I get it. I get it. And you're, you're touching on something that I wanted to ask you about because you're, you're sort of describing that the next level to get there just if i understood what you said you're suggesting that the path you're on is the right path and it's a case of continuing to grind with the things you're doing and you called out that the you know a lot of the labels at the top are are run by big people that were big name djs first and you know i i can't think of any labels at the top that weren't at least started by a big name dj and then so do you think that it is the the path you're on, or are there some specific parts of the product that you think are the key to being able to unlock that step to the next to the next uh, level? Let's say, is it stuff like sync? Is it is it brand deals? You know, you just just see Goldie pick up obviously a good payday from Adidas. We can only assume because he's doing some brand deals with Adidas. You know, is it the, what is it that takes overview from the top of the underground to on that level with the biggest names in drum and bass? I mean, there's just, you know, there are a lot of things, <laughs> you know, there are a lot of things. It's not like one, one specific thing, you know, it, it is the, the build up of multiple things, you know, you, as a, you, you know, you already said, you know, a lot of them, to be honest, you know, things like sync, things like getting more understanding of publishing, uh, yeah, you know, looking further afield, you know, we're still trying to, obviously we, we're trying to grow ourselves in the event capacity. We still haven't like fully got to that next stage with with certain events you know we don't do masses of festivals still like you know we did one sort of one festival last year which was outlook which was a stage takeover outlook which was like which was surreal and and again like and that and that's the thing that you know i need to kind of you know that i because i because it's like i was like oh god we only had one we only had one festival last year yeah, but it's not it's not your local folk festival. It's fucking stage takeover out there, right? Exactly, exactly that. And it's like, and it's like, okay, we, you know, you've had that this year, and and it's like, just be grateful because again, if I had to turn around to myself at the beginning of overview and said by year five you'd be doing a stage takeover at Outlook, I would have been absolutely fucking over the moon. And it was an amazing, amazing experience. And it and it really, and obviously there's that then that desire in me to be like, I want more of this. Uh, and 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 that's what everyone is pushing for. That's what everyone is pushing for. They want the bigger shows. They want the, the you know the bigger audiences. And and it's like that. It's like getting out there to more people. Um, that is going to just obviously like grow. And and yeah, like look at all these different aspects of the business. I mean, I, I now in the last year we started a second label, and I'm also running uh, an agency now as well uh, for like for bookings. So that's been like again like another aspect of the the business that I am learning. Again, trying to take it in house, trying to do it myself. Like, yes, there's certainly like an aspect of it where it's like trying to do something that could generate some more money, but obviously, yeah, I'm trying to obviously like as I said, grow the business, grow the value of the business, trying to and trying to help people, you know, fundamentally that's more what it comes down to. Um, because it's like, you know, I was as I said, been a been a been promoter for a long time. Know a lot of artists. You know, felt like a bit of a natural progression. But yeah, I, I'm certainly wearing a lot of different hats. Uh, but it's yeah, it's just like pushing pushing yourself and and pushing these different sides of things uh, that will just, as I said, help it grow and help it build. And and that's the thing you've got to keep on, got to keep on growing, got to keep on you know pushing yourself, following you know gaining that momentum that is going to then grow and and breed more success or breed you know the you know more you know more coming in yeah that's kind of you know where we're kind of at at the moment i sort of feel like we're in this kind of like we're in this middle ground right now where you know because you sort of said you know we're at the top of the underground you know we're not you know we've released some very you know borderline very commercial music you know uh you know it's not 
not the underground overview that we had, you know, four or five years ago. Uh, it's a different beast now, but we're still not quite on that next level with a certain echelon of labels. You know, we're kind of in this transitional period right now to kind of to try and get there. Uh, and I can see, I can see where I'm going. It's just putting one foot in front of the other to to keep on sort of heading heading that way and see where it goes. Uh, you know, that's yeah. no what. You know, nothing is certain. You, you're never sure quite exactly 100 percent what will happen along the way. But yeah, you just have to, you know, that's it. Just have to keep on going, and these these opportunities come your way, and and hopefully, if you're kind of in the right sort of place you can you can take that opportunity and i've fucked up a number of them but i've also taken a number of them uh you know so yeah just keep on keep on at it keep on keeping on we we keep, we definitely learn from failure as well as success so it's valid to to not look back on that negatively i think but you know to summarize what you're saying you're sort of describing that whilst also pushing forward to make the, the piece of the pizza that you've got already in the music side of things bigger you're also kind of diversifying your product a bit. You're moving into the the talent agency side of things. You, you talked about publishing and a second label. So you're kind of diversifying that product and taking every part of the music industry that your products touch on. How can we do that ourselves and make something out of that? So you end up in this kind of creative agency space, right? Which, which I think we see it. I see that as a common theme between people that are, you know, on the similar path to where you've you've travelled, and, and that makes sense. I think. I said right from the start of IA that that was probably the long-term answer if it was going to be a replacement for a career. It was you had to get to the permit, the position where you made a full-time job out of it. And to do that, you'd need to be doing a wide range of things. It was never just going to be about releasing music and you'd be able to pay more because you quit your job, like, like you've said. Um, but it doesn't quite work like that. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. Um, but just stepping away from the side of the business side of things for a minute. So one thing that I learned when I've since I've started running a label is that as much about it being about artists and music and releasing music, something that I hadn't appreciated was that it's actually about community. And so my experience has been, you know, initially with artists and with people that are part of the label team, those like close like friends or fans, whatever word you want to use, you, you form a community and then that kind of grows. And then you end up with this kind of collective group of people that are invested in whatever the brand is. And you end up with a community that kind of exists whether or not the label is 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 releasing money or doing those things and if there is an insight into what's the overview community like what is it how do you know does it does it run on its own do you direct it do you lead it is there a community that kind of does those things and what does the overview community mean to to you i suppose is where i'm going with this uh, we we definitely are very sort of community driven i would say I've always, I've always approached things in a very personal sort of way, which I think is is a little different to to some labels and some brands. You know, we can be a bit sort of can be a bit tongue in cheek, and it's not always so so super serious. But it's it certainly is something that I've always taken seriously. Like you know, just bringing people together. I mean, like you know, going back to what I said initially about what i've always enjoyed doing is bringing people together is connecting people like-minded people I think you know i i probably struggle to fit in a hundred percent before i found uh drum and bass and before i found this music like you know you know i, I to be honest i don't sort of still talk to an awful lot of people from my kind of like social circles at school like I very much like don't be wrong there's still some people there but in general you know most of those people were just not interested in in this and in, interested in what I wanted to be interested in so to now like have a global network of of friends is so inspiring and, and it's so cool you know I go to you know, I meet, I meet like the, 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 the me's of, of a community on the other side of the world. I, you know, we were out in, um, Los Angeles just recently. We did a, 
We did a tour of Americas. Mm. <laughs> yeah, to the cash, you know, very difficult. Just, you know, cash, <laughs> as, as, as you do. Um, but over there, you know, we because the guy that kind of really helped me make it happen was a guy called Jester, uh, who runs a record label called Momentive out there. So again, guy running events, multi-talented, disciplined artist guy, like super motivated. And we just like instantly like hit, hit it off. It's like, oh, right. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like I knew that guy for a long time. Or it's like, he's the guy that was doing the guy. He's the guy that does what I do over there. And he's bringing his people together and he's pushing, you know, he's being that person to, to try and drive you know, people towards this type of music and, you know, it's people like that. And that's, you know, that's why I, I, you know, I love so much about it. Um, you know, and it, and it does require that effort from, from you and it does require the effort from me to, to be, yeah, taking charge, making things happen, uh, that will bring people to you and will bring people together. And, you know, we, we, you know, we offer a lot, you know, I do, do offer a lot, you know, in terms of, you know, you could have as involved kind of experience with overview. You could you could have a very involved experience with overview. You know, uh, you know, which would be, you know could be you know we have very direct. You know, there's there's WhatsApp chats or uh, you know there's Patreon. You know, you can you know you can get involved as little or as much as you want, and to be able to offer that to people, you know, I think you know, builds a stronger sense of community around it. And yeah, I mean, it is just, you know, it is, it is very important. Um, and yeah, I just, you know, I do, like I said, I do just enjoy that and enjoy that, that ability to, to connect people and bring people together. Um, you know, and it, I, whether or not it's, you know, it's completely set us apart, you know, obviously everyone does it in their own way, but, yeah, like I said, like, you know, I'm very, I try to be very approachable. I try to be, you know, very, you know, a good person, you know, and I like to, you know, and I like to, you know, the people that we have around us, I mean, you know, fundamentally like, you know, the artists, you know, all the, all the, all the artists and the label, the roster of of artists, you know, we all are all, we're all good mates and we all, I mean, that, that can be a challenge as well, being, being, you know, friends and business can be, can have its own unique challenges but in general everybody really gets on with each other you know we we try to you know when we do an event you know you come to say a show in bristol or, or whatever and we're all there like you know i do i try to you know I, I have a sense of people and i can kind of tell in a way like this person is going to fit in this person is going to fit in with us and not in a clicky sense like like that but yeah, I mean, it's just like I said, like-minded people, very similar outlook on life, you know, and and sort of warding off, you know, dickheads, uh, you know, which then I think then breeds, you know, it, it kind of like separates the wheat from the chaff in a in a in a way, you know, you know, you come to an overview show and and they are very like friendly, happy you know, everyone's really gassed to be there, you know, it's, it's not like a real aggy environment, you know, it's, it's that, and that's the kind of, and I think that's through fostering how we approach and, and how we communicate and how I communicate and, and it, and then it has that ripple on effect at large and the artists that are involved and, and people gravitate towards that. And it's powerful. It's, it's, you know, it's a powerful sort of, you know, side of it. Um, you know, and like I said, it's not for everybody, you know, some people want something different and they can go and find that, but we offer that place and, and that, so the people that, w w like I said, will naturally come to us and then, you know, it further creates the, the community as it, as it were, cause people find, you know, find it and then they're like, oh my God, you know, I can't believe I didn't find this place sooner sort of mm -hmm. Then you nailed it, man, because so many times I've had this conversation with people where the, the conversation starts with, you know, I initially felt myself as an outsider, but then I found my people and then we've built a community around that. And it's just such a common theme in our scene, like the music side of it, the specifically drum and bass people. You know, we're not, we're not about 
looking flash or whatever. It's about a kind of connection, a personal connection. And often that revolves around the music. So making a space for that, and it's valid. What, how you view your community is valid. You know, you do come across as approachable. You are approachable. You do come across with a little bit of um, self-awareness and humility. You're not afraid to kind of poke fun at yourself and, and the brand as well. And that's good. I've seen that. Sometimes I do dress up as a giant frog. Or something. Yeah. Yeah, you do. That was fantastic. I've forgotten about that. That was absolutely fantastic. I was thinking about the uh, April Fools thing with the festival bookings as well, but uh, <laughs> well, the the print print works and all yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah, that was that was. I think that was my best April Fools yet. Actually, that was uh, people had people had like their parents ringing them up. I think <laughs> you know, I can't believe you're playing at print works. That's so we, good. We 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 actually had we actually had a, a quite a, quite a big fan of of overview. She she saw the the announcement and didn't kind of look too much further in it and actually cancelled her holiday with her oh, dad fuck. to re- to rebook uh, rebook it so she could come to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> so that I bet, yeah, I bet you didn't feel great after that. Uh, I felt very bad for her. I did actually send her a uh, like a package. We sent her like vinyl and t shirts and everything. So I did. Nice. I did feel bad about. It. I mean, it was partly her own fault for not obviously like it's April the, birth, the, right? <laughs> but that one was a bit too close to bone. But yeah, no. so you no, know, it's things like that. You know, it does. Uh, you know, we try to you know try to have a bit of fun. Although I think yeah, I probably have not had as much fun lately. I think since since having a child, it's certainly made things a bit more serious, shall we say. You, do you feel that you like time that you do choose to spend on kind of like, let's say, fun things? Like, do you do you feel like you put more? Uh, what's the right way to phrase this? Do you feel like you need to get more value out of it now than before? Is it, maybe it's more or less a fair before, and now you're like, right, if I'm going to spend this time in this way, I need to make it worth it. Uh, I think there is a certain element to that. It's not so much about the, you know, thinking about what I need to get out of the time. It's more just the, the, you know, the straightforward fact of like, I only have, you know, this amount of time and I've, you know, and then I've got to go pick up, you know, it's even like today, you know, I've got a certain amount of time. I've then got to go pick him up from nursery and we've got to, you know, feed him and bath him. And that already has knocked out, you know, most of the evening. Whereas before, you know, I would probably, you know, be working, you know, through the evening, to be honest. Like, I probably have been a bit of a workaholic. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's just like actual time. You know, my time has definitely become less. So it's like I have to prioritize, you know, the releases and the events and and the really important stuff, you know. And so to, to have the time left over for my silly fucking memes and, and whatever has become has become harder to to find that um you know plus obviously you know having a life got a relationship you know you know it's, it, it, it things have definitely become a lot more serious uh which is sad because you know i do miss that kind of you know yeah not having any responsibility and just sort of being able to sort of dick around you know and whatever whereas it's now it's like no you know i've got this time and i need to make you know i need to need to make something happen in it um and there's only so many hours in the day like i think that's been yeah as i said that's been, definitely been the challenge um you know lately has just been yeah trying to find the time because yeah it just it just gone um so yeah we haven't i haven't done quite as many memes in the last sort of year which ollie ollie would actually be happy about to be honest with you so i don't i think ollie ollie would not necessarily think that's a bad thing yeah, I, I don't have any wisdom to give you on that one because I, I can't say it's going to get better. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is the thing. It's like I, you know, I can totally imagine it's not really like. I mean, th- I mean, that's the choice. I mean, that is the choice, and that you know, it's part of growing up. I mean, that's you know, that's I, I, the, the amount of growing up that I've had to do in the last year is is crazy, to be honest. And you know, I certainly took for granted a lot before having a child and and now you know now it's like okay but it's it's just like okay you know it, this has happened now you know i've got to f- just make it work like it's it's uh you know i don't really have a choice I, you know i don't yeah so i find that quite powerful though, because if you don't have a choice about something you just there isn't a question of should i or shouldn't i it's just a case of how will i 
and you just get on and do right so yes it is, can be sometimes a pain in the ass having something else or someone else in charge of your time but also you just you just get on and do so yeah say so find ways to make it work and you know i very much have a very kind of like nine to five i mean you know probably earlier than that you know i probably start work at sort of half eight you know and, I, and then i pick them back up at, again at six you know so yeah half eight to half five you know it's kind of my weekdays and and yeah you know so i have to be very much more organized you know back in you know a number of years ago i would be waking up at 11 o'clock you know and and you know i i would work all the way through until like till 10 11 you know sometimes you know if i if i if i had to you know so it, yeah like it, it does take that away but this series is like is that a bad thing like again there's pros and cons you know there's pros and cons to to both um you know there's no right or wrong i don't think it's just different pardon the interruption just take a minute to say today's episode of the interstellar audio podcast is sponsored by filthy a streetwear brand built by the scene for the scene if you're looking for threads inspired by the rave but designed for everywhere check out www.filthyuk.com listeners of the interstellar audio podcast can use the code interstellar at checkout for 10 percent off site-wide keep it filthy just want to go back to so you we were talking about community and we were talking about you know interaction with the, the wider overview and you talked about how in general the artists are often friends and you, you have a bit of a friendship group and it, it makes me want to ask you know what does the artist and label relationship look like in that like where we are at the moment you know what does the label do for the artist because we know we're in the age of self-publishing and a lot of a lot of artists might say i don't need a label la 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 and a lot of labels might say you know, I'm a professional nagger, I'll help you get stuff done. And so it's things like that. So how, where do you think the value and the relationship sits at the moment between label and artist? I mean, I think that's what is the key aspect of being a label is to be like, well, what I, what am I actually going to bring? Am I actually going to be able to help this person? You know, am I going to be able to provide something that they can't provide themselves? Because like you're saying, you know, you can self-publish and self-release and 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 a number of artists are going down that route you know it has become a bit of a trend with with the certainly some of the bigger guys like you know well we can use we can use um etherwood as an example he's just got his own path hasn't he and he's a you know highly highly rated highly established artist and he's decided to go his own path yeah you know and i, and I think that's you know i think it's a very valid side of it <laughs> yeah again there's pros and cons to it just in terms of you do miss out on that kind of label camaraderie and being part of a roster and being you know what that can offer and th and that's what you know like i said that's what we what we aim to do is is offer value and offer offer a sense of community to an artist you know offer a platform you know help push their career but that's you know that's the responsibility that we have and we you know there, there is pressure there you know and and not to say we always get it right, but we really try to, you know, offer a really great service and, and, you know, what I want is an artist to sort of come through the release schedule uh, or, or just in general, just be like, I really love working with these guys. You know, they're super, super communica communicative because there's nothing worse than a record label. You know, I hear horror stories, you know, just ghosting people really long to get back you know when it comes to paying royalties they just disappear you know we we try to you know run a very transparent and and like i said communicative business where someone knows that they could just message us and they're going to get a reply within half an hour if that you know to anything that they have any any questions they have you know and we will do our best to whatever request that they have to try and make it happen whether it's you know, I'd like to feature with this person or I'd like to collaborate with this person or, I, you know, I want to get something here, whether it's a published publication or, or an outlet or something like that. And then and that's what we obviously then go out to make happen for them. You know, we take that pressure away from an artist so they don't have to worry as much and can focus on releasing the music and, and, and making the music fundamentally. Um, and, and again, you know, and that's, you know, we, you know, we do run it a bit different to, to some people because, you know, we don't have our own careers. You know, I go back to that kind of aspect of, um, you know, when a, when a, when a label is run by, by an artist and, 
you know, usually those labels tend, you know, they are really, they're there for, to release the artist's music and then they just also let other people on and release music with them. Whereas we don't have that at all. You know, our priority is just the label, is just the event, is, you know, it's fully overview and it's fully about that. It's not about us per se. You know, I have my own... You know, I have my own ambitions and and I do cert, you know certain things, but I don't have a career in that same respect. Especially, with, you know, with the, I don't make music. I don't make music. Neither does Ollie. You know, we are label people, and um, we give that. And 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 I and for a lot of people, that's you know that's really desirable place to to be involved. Um, and and again, like I said, you know, we we have a very fun relationship with most people when it and it you know it it does sort of blur the lines between business and friendship um you know and and that that, as i said that can have its own challenges and you know it's not always you know sunshines and and lollipops but you know doing doing fun shit with your mates and, and 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 i think that then comes across in the kind of in what we do because it it seems a lot because it is fun you know it is a lot more fun and and we don't have you know we give a lot of freedom to to our artists you know we don't you know yes we will you know come in with some criticism or we will say we don't like something but in general you know we are very kind of accepting and because we're not producers i'm not sitting there going oh, you know, there's this, this snare is, you know, is hitting at a certain frequency that is not quite right. And, you know, I'm not, and and, and that can be, that can also then be a a hindrance because obviously some people want to have, you know, want to have that feedback, but others don't, you know, and others, you know, you know, and and we, and I find that the best music tends to be made in conditions when the artist can just do what they want. And, they are fully in control of their art and they are fully in control of what they want to do. And it's like, if that, res- if that resonates with them and they really love it and it resonates with us, everyone's, everyone's happy. You know, I don't have to sit there going, oh, you know, but it could just be a little bit more this or change this 16 around and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So how do you QC then? That's interesting that you say that. You know, how do you QC the the sound? Like, who's making sure, from an engineering point of view, what you put out is right? Well, the artists are. Yeah, that's really interesting. So you just give them full trust. If they say it's right, it's right. I mean, you know, that, you know, we're not like completely naive, and and obviously now having done it a certain thing, but that's that's the thing. Is like I'm I'm like a, you know, an Ollie as well, and that's one thing that like I think I think is actually like our strongest, one of our strongest attributes you know is is our taste is our is our ability to be able to hear something and and it speak to us or us go yeah i really like that or or i don't really like that you know and it can be as you know as as simple as that you know and then you know there can be like you know don't be wrong there can be things where it's like you know i can see something here it needs you know it needs something more i'm not necessarily going to be the one to say specifically what you need you know in terms of like i'm going to give you this big long list of feedback of exactly what needs to be done i will say it needs something more or you know this is something's not quite right you know and that's then the kind of you know the what then the artist needs to go off and figure out sometimes um you know like i said we have a certain level of of understanding but it yeah yeah you know i I think it, it is more about taste and I'm sure, you know, there's probably a lot of music that has been released on the Overview back catalogue where, like, if, like, a serious audio nerd, you know, if, if you know, Mephius or Noisier, you know, these people that, like, you know, really, really absolutely know from a production standpoint everything, probably could go back over a number of our releases and go, oh, that's not quite right, or oh, this isn't, this isn't quite the right thing, but because I'm not looking at it from that perspective, yeah, I don't know. It's like what you don't know can't hurt you. It's really interesting because it's. I think you're the first person in a, a of the people in that like space where I look up to that's that way about it. Every time I've had this conversation before, the answer has been you need someone doing QC from an engineering point of view. 
And so it's really actually quite refreshing to hear, actually, you're, you're kind of saying the artists can do that amongst themselves. And that's kind of what the community is about. And they'll help each other and they'll figure it out between them and their peers, right? There is a certain level of that. Yeah, no, I think there is a there is a big thing of that, you know. And certainly, I think with the a lot of the younger generation as well, they're even more... There's a whole bunch of them, you know, it's people like Yano, Azotics, Wings, uh, Gyrofield, Late Sleeper. Yeah, Wings is well into it. Like, you know, see the guy's videos. He knows what he's doing, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. He is like, he is militantly, you know, to to a point where like, you know, not every, you can't, I can't, I mean, Wings is a very good barometer for me. You know, I will, you know, there are people out there that I will send some stuff to if I'm unsure and go what do you think of this, you know, and, and, and now it's, you know, he is certainly one of them. Not to say I can trust absolutely everything that he says, because otherwise we would only release militant <laughs> German tech. Yeah. Um, you know, but in general, you know, they sort of help each other out. And that's the thing is, that, you know, we go to, to work with these talented guys and talented girls and, and have that faith in them, have that trust in them that, you know, they, I know they're, they're good enough. Like, I, you know, I don't need to tell them what they need to do. Like, they've either been doing it long enough. Um, you know, or, yeah, again, it's like finding those people. It's finding those people that, you know, have that ability. Yeah, so, you, you know, so we don't need to worry in that same respect. Um, I think it's, you know, when when maybe you're, you know, when maybe you're, you know, in the earlier stages of, of a record label, dealing with artists that are in an earlier stage of their production or their career you know i think there is maybe yeah more maybe some people do need more help um you know but, that, but that's the thing is like most of the time you know because we have quite a high bar for entry like we're not usually having to worry about that because it's like not to say those people wouldn't get there but i can i can hear quite quickly when someone sends a demo through or sends music through to be like this isn't quite there this isn't the standard that we need for overview so sorry like you know yeah you know uh, good luck um and that's not to say you know people people will improve i mean you know there's so you know that and that's the thing you know people improve and, and the people that really put in work you know there are some people that have really surprised me i guess you know over the years where yeah they've come on in leaps and bounds and and things can change for sure uh, i mean some are just like <laughs> you know for whatever reason just god-givenly naturally have that natural ability or have just figured out certain things quite earlier on so yeah and, and that's obviously my you know what my sort of role is is is, is finding these people and and bringing them in or you know sometimes they'll find me or they'll get you know i'll get sort of a tip uh to be like hey you know you need to check out this person or or whatever but like i said you know i've, I've just like been doing it so long that you do you know i do almost have a almost like have a sixth sense about it in a way you know i can tell a lot by hearing someone's music seeing how they promote themselves seeing how they act how they talk you know how they communicate with me you can gauge i can gauge a lot through that and it's you know a lot of the time because it's already this previous experience that i've had already dealing with people um that yeah it's given me that kind of insight to to yeah to 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 the, to the ones that maybe are going to yeah push on a bit further or people that are going to sort of fit in with with what we do um that's again a bit of a long-winded <laughs> answer for that one because that is where i was going i was i was hoping we'd get to because it'd be, it'd be silly of me to not ask you because there's there's so many people that want to know how do i get how do i make myself attractive to uh, to overview or what you know labels like overview i mean I, I think i mean fundamentally first and foremost it has to be the music like it does like there there isn't any getting a, 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 around that like for us it certainly is like that's obviously going to be the first judge you know of anything but you know yes you know there are probably certain elements where we do look at a bit more than than that as well you know do they play out do they you know are they regularly playing sort of shows you know how active are they in the scene you know how are they promoting themselves how are they how what is their social media game like like what you know what what you know where, what what's been their progression where has that music come from like who have they worked with you know there can be you know a lot of different factors but 
you know, it does have to be the music, really. Like some people can rush it, I think, to they obviously want the kind of the glory or 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 whatever before they're probably ready for it or before their music is ready for it and people and that and that's where like you've got to be honest with yourself and, and look it's easy it's easy enough for me you know, i can't fucking make music so obviously you know a number of people are a lot further ahead than me but it's that thing of like what separates you know what separates because there are you know there's a lot of people making music you know and and i can't sign everybody that sends sends demos in what is going to separate someone and i you know i do you know sometimes talk about having like an extra sort of 10 15 percent of what is going to really separate you and you know and, and having your own unique sound as well you know i do think that that is so that is so important because increasingly even more so these days there can be a lot of very similar sounding things and people are trying to sound like other people rather than try to sound like themselves. And, you know, for me, that's very important. You know, I really, you know, we do try to work with people and I, you know, I would, and I would say that, you know, pretty much everybody, you know, on, on the roster sounds like them. They have their own sound. They have their own style. And, and 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 it's just them and that's what is very appealing to work with people rather than yeah people that just as i said you can just you couldn't tell who it is you know they and they could be it could be a whole bunch of people um you know and that and that's that's hard you know that takes you know that takes a lot of work and that takes a lot of graft and a lot of grind and that's maybe what some people are I'm going to say that they're not prepared for it, but you could think that they could be like, this sounds amazing. And it may sound amazing, but it may also sound like 90% of other, of other, of other tracks. And it may just be fully full of sample pack stuff and, and not have as much unique character about it. Um, that is good. Yeah, so that's off putting, you know, and especially when, you know, you, someone in my position where i hear you know an awful lot of music and and i've i've heard so much music over my over my life that i can you know you you could just hear these things and you can't even necessarily put you know a, a total put your finger on exactly what it is or what 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 it is but yeah you just be like oh well I've, i feel like i've heard this before or you know or this uses the same sample pack lead snare that you know it's just it's just not doing enough um so yeah that and that's the, that's the challenge for you know to what you know if you're trying to get signed to you know a top top label um yeah you know and, that, and that, you know the best the better ones usually are the harder ones to to get on really um you know, although our roster is, you know, rel is getting relatively large now, it's still, you know, we still do make it somewhat challenging, or at least like anybody that is signed, you know, they are able to keep up with anybody else that's on the label. Really, like that's that's the key. Well, you do do you do do a good job of that. You've done like, more this year than like, I mean, at least from my perspective, more this year than maybe in the past, where you've you you do a really good job with your camp. But you've also made space for some new new names to come through as well. Some people that I've seen come from smaller labels and move up, and that's that's great to see that path. It does give people that are working on their journey that inspiration. But you're right to say, if I reflect now, those people that I'm thinking of, they have their own sound. They don't sound like other people that are on the label or on other labels. And it makes sense now as to why you'd go, yeah, that's the one that's coming. I, t I totally get it. That that insight is is super valuable because i can see that with like people that i i work with if they're going to say what is the difference what do i need to do that that's it really it's it's have your own sound which is difficult to do because we work in an industry that prioritizes sounding like the mold so it's about carving out a little bit of difference isn't it in a in a constrained lane you know you can't be too experimental it was something interesting, actually. Uh, it was a really good podcast I'd recommend with Zero T. Uh, he was on the Amen Brother 
podcast recently and he he was actually talking about how you know back in back in the 90s you know everybody was using all different hardware and different programs and 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 no one really you know some people traded sort of secrets or or whatever but a lot of people were just figuring it out for themselves so you had very radically different sounding people whereas now you know, basically everyone produces on ableton same door same samples same same yeah. door Zero. everyone using you know yeah. splice and you know i'm probably getting the same sort of tutorials off of so and so and like you can hear that you know in a certain you know in a certain way where there, there has been you know a bit of a standardization of things um you know and, and that's kind of sad um i mean it's you know, it's like the the blessing and the curse of all this information that is is readily available, I guess. Um, but it's like you don't have to let that be the case. You can take a real stand to be like, I don't want to sound like everybody else. I want to try and carve my own uniqueness. Someone when I, you know, someone I would definitely big up at the moment. Um, you know, I think he was doing it in a in a great way as uh, Para. Um, that's exactly what I was thinking about when I was, <laughs> you know, because again, I mean, again, like you know, we, you know, when we signed uh, his track T to uh, Zone Three, but it's not like, like you know, his his music is not like super 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 commercially sellable. Like it's a bit weird and it's a bit wonky and it's a bit like it's a bit ganky and it's a bit like it's not like your sort of like standard dj friendly sort of you know club bangers per se but you know we we heard it and we were just like damn like this guy is like just got something different like he's got he's he's really got a sound and he's do i've not heard anyone else do this like this is really Super unique versatile as well he can touch many different styles but still give it his own flavor if that makes sense yeah, no, no, and he's you know he likes a lot of like multi-genre sort of stuff, and you know, and he, and he and he's just super creative, and he's you know gives all his tracks super crazy track titles, and like, and and you know, and and he's and he's a super fucking lovely guy, and and, and that again was like for us was like that's you know that's exactly the kind of you know someone that we want to be working with, um, you know, and, and trying to find people like that, and and even speaking to him, you know, he very much you know when we spoke to him and met him properly and. And he very much was like, you know, I really am trying to make something for myself and and not sound like other people. And I really put the effort into that, and and it's and it's paying off for him. You know, he he has stuck to his guns, and it's you know not everybody is going to like it, but then like the people that matter, you know, say people in in my position, you know, he's obviously got you know working a bit with Flex out, you know, he just put a track on Critical, you know, because us in our positions. You know, we hear so much, and then when we, you know, hear someone really bringing something different to the table, that's, you know, that's, you know, that's almost more appealing than, you know, just start signing a standard, you know, DJ friendly club banger that you just know, you know, could sell units, but it's not really doing anything that interesting um and that's you know that's that's the difference you know so it's you know credit credit to him you know, and yeah you know we certainly have you know given a few people yeah given a few more people an opportunity uh you know in the probably in the last year i would say um yeah because we just didn't want to get things sort of too stale i guess um you know we have a really great roster of artists but maybe there was an element where it, it was getting a little bit predictable in in some respects like and that's you know that and that for me isn't as exciting like you know even for you know for me you know if i if i'm a fan you know putting my fan perspective on off the label to be like oh you know oh it's another release by x artist on the label and it still sounds like the last release that they had on on you know really you know and and it's not pushing the envelope um which, you know, I wish I've always wanted to, you know, wanted to do to throw the curveballs to sort of test people to to try and, you know, be, as I said, be at the forefront, you know, really be at the forefront of, 
try to push the you know push the sound push the scene for you know not just do what's been done already you know really try and do stuff that yeah hasn't been done or that we haven't done to you know to test ourselves to to challenge ourselves when we just put out a release you know with vel which you, you know you may have seen which was completely different to to anything that we've put out you know in a in a number of years you know really for me that release kind of i that harks back to like real early gyrofield kind of um you know sensibilities and yeah we just wanted to give an opportunity give a chance you know do something different i know you know i knew that that i know that our release was not gonna like shift units like uh you know it it wasn't about that you know for me it was just like i really you know it was really emotive music that i really connected with and and we you know it made sense so it was like well you know we don't you know just have to sometimes you know there's definitely become a bit more pressure i guess with the kind of success quote unquote that we sort of had and sometimes you know i've i've got to kind of try and take a step back from that to to remember what it's about and why we're doing it and and not worrying about that kind of thing so much and just wanting to put out good music people are going to love that though like you know the overview ethos stands true to its values stands true to what made it what it was you know you, you six years isn't a long time but also you are quite far down your road now to still be true to that i think is admirable so yeah that's off mate um and and you yeah you're doing good and like trying to sort of bring us towards a, a hopefully what might be a sensible end what does um 2025 bring for you are there things that you're kind of going after or you're working on that you you want to talk about or not some things you probably won't be able to talk about but, you know what, what does 2025 look like that 2024 didn't look like let's say i mean you know we've certainly got i mean the, the, i would say that the difference i would probably say at the moment is like our our schedule has just got so sort of crazy you know in terms of you know we've basically filled up to sort of next sort of june in terms of like releases and, and we're i mean for the first part of the year i think we're basically releasing every friday um whether that's a, you know there's a lot of singles in there you know there's a lot of singles four eps and that kind of thing like i'm half you know half dreading it because it is going to be it is going to be pretty relentless but that's kind of just like the position where it's kind of like this momentum that we're building and this you know this snowball and obviously all the people that we're working with and and there's a lot of people trying to sort of like via via for position should we say i mean there's there's a there's quite an interesting project ollie's working on at the moment because we kind of dipped our toes a little bit in the 140 kind of realm with clinical last year which uh you know was was super super successful i mean that was one of the biggest selling <laughs> biggest dps we've ever put out to be honest which was kind of mad i mean dan you know dan's been a very very important person for 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 my journey he was there at lifestyle you know and he's now still here with overview he's kind of like the golden boy the golden boy of the of the label um so you know he took a bit of a you know because we weren't we you know we're not we're not known you know 140 label and he took a bit of a punt on that and it and that went down really well so ollie is kind of working on a like a 140 va project which is kind of like drum and bass artists doing 140 is the kind of the kind of vibe so, so that is you know there's some really really good music on there i mean like you know drum and bass producers are obviously like very very great engineers so kind of when they turn their attention to another genre they tend to do it very well so yeah we've kind of given a bit of a a platform for that which you know should be good that should be coming coming through uh we've got a few artists that kind of haven't released before um a few sort of say bigger artists um which should be good and i think you know one of one of my biggest i mean i'm really i'm really wanting to like up the levels on kind of like the events and the festival side of things for next year as well 
like you know we've we've been we've done a lot of shows and like we you know we do do a lot of shows and uh, and it's something that i you know i've really tried to push but yeah i really want to you know i'm really trying to make a real go of trying to do as much as we can <laughs> basically from from the event side of things because yeah it's very very important you know like that whole thing of like it's what bring it it's what brings it all together and it's what kind of you know we talk about going to that next level it's it's really what will push us to that next level you know is is really getting out there doing some really big shows you know trying to get on some big festival lineups and you know really making people aware of overview because we're you know we're still we're still a little bit of an un you know slightly unknown um you know within certain circles of drum and bass shall we say um you know the people that know you know the people that matter tend to know but there's still you know there's still a lot of people out there that you know we haven't quite broken through to that sort of that next stage and so hopefully you know hopefully 2025 you know could be that that year we'll see um yeah you know and then you know there, there's sort of just you know a lot of the you know a lot of the same you know <laughs> same same but different same colors but bigger paintbrushes i like that yes yeah. that's a really good quote i like that just made it up you can have that one <laughs> did you see it really? yeah yeah i probably read it wise. probably read it in the book somewhere but very wise very wise uh so, but yeah you know that's that's the general that's the general gist but of course good luck with it and i have no doubt in in your ability to succeed with it and keep inspiring other people along the way as well so huge one there before i let you go back to your day and go and collect your son do you have anything that you wish I'd given you the space to say before I cut you off? Um, and if not, who's your one to watch for next year? So, my one to watch for next year. Oh, Jesus. Uh, off the top of my head, Dot Dash. Dot Dash is someone at the moment that's coming through that I think, uh, I think he's... I think he's on the way to do some good things. He's kind of in the same sort of ilk as Exotics, Vizsla, um, Levance as well. I think is someone that I think is going to have a big a big year next year. He, I mean, Levance has been around for a long time, but I think he's he's always been one of these guys that has kind of sat. I I don't know. He's he's not quite managed to to put himself on that next sort of pedestal but i mean he's been at it for for a long time and he and he's a talented lad and there's sort of a few things that i know that may be happening behind the scenes that i think you know kick kick him on i'd like to say the vel as well i think the vel uh that we just put the release out with like they i think that they that there's some big potential there and i hope that they could they can realize the potential they have because they're an american artist and you know american american drum and bass you know is kind of really on the kind of rise at the moment like the you know the scene is is really healthy out there at the moment and there's not an awful lot of american drum and bass acts there, there are a few don't get me wrong but it's not like yeah, there's like an, there, I think there's there's opportunity there. There is opportunity there for American producers uh, to 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 be able to kind of you know probably have a bit of an advantage, you know, in some respects. So you know, hopefully, hopefully they could uh, you know realize that potential. You know, in general, I've probably said just about what I do need to, but I could I could talk for a lot longer, but. I think basically anyone that should just come over, check out Overview, come give us a follow on Instagram, on Facebook, watch my podcast. I do, I do have my own uh, Overview podcast where I play tracks from across the drum and bass scene. We run a show on call, come to an event, uh, buy some merchandise. I, I want to do some more merchandise as well. I think, or do do some more. That's 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 probably one of my big challenges i would say next year would be a cool time to really sort of get that up and running again because we we sort of done bits and pieces but we haven't really made as much of a go at it as we could do 
Um, so that's a bit of a bit of a. Mate, I've got bikinis for sale, so you know, step up. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. <laughs> what? Why did you do that? Why not? <laughs> I've got trunks I, as well. Yeah. Like you know, it's not just bikinis. We got you're you're having you're having me on. I'll send you a link. I'll send you a link. You're fucking joking. You are joking. That's a joke. Sunglasses. Sunglasses is that brilliant. would be good. Yeah, that would be good. I've actually. Uh, I do actually. These are my. These are my overview. The overview sunglasses. Oh, nice! In a proper uh, embossed stamped. Yeah, we got a proper embossed stamp. They've got their own little, uh, their own little bag. These are yeah. These are my. These are my babies at the moment. Um, they're kind of like they. We kind of soft launch them. They're not actually like fully, fully sell, on sale to the public at the moment. Um, so when the. Um, when the summer, when the sun comes back round again, we're going to have a real push. I'm going to try and fl- I'm gonna become a fl- I'm going to become a sunglasses salesman. Basically, I'm going to you know that's that's the idea. Check your DMs. I just sent your DM. I want to see your live reaction. <laughs> Christmas jumper. <laughs> yeah, you want one? I mean, that's uh, do I want one? <laughs> I mean, why not? I am now just having a look at the interstellar bikini. <laughs> what the fuck? What were you thinking? What were you thinking? Oh, I'll, I'll tell you what I was thinking. We did the Christmas jumper launch, and our New Zealand crew were like, "Yo, bro, it's summertime. Where's the where's the togs?" So we made togs. <laughs> What's what does togs mean? I didn't know either. Like it's, it's Kiwi for swimmers. Oh, I see. Wow, mate, you, you're going you're going in on the merch. It's easy when it's like printed. Got the mouse pads, <laughs> the sliders. Basically, if someone says they want something, I make it. It's as simple as that. I mean, my thing with the merch is just like I, because I can like I I think the things what I what do I want? What do you want? Yeah, it's like I was like I need a I need a set of sunglasses. I might as well make some overview sunglasses. Yeah, I, was like, I wanted a, a beanie. I was like, I'm just going to make an overview beanie. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then ho- so. hopefully it resonates with people. Uh, but merch is tough. Merch is tough. And I'll tell you what, since Brexit as well. Uh, oh, yeah, the EU stuff, mate. We see that conversation yesterday, yeah? Yeah, yeah. No, it's fucked. It's actually <laughs> fucked. Uh, so fuck Brexit. Fuck, uh, fuck Nigel Farage, basically. That is the it perfect way life. to end our podcast, I reckon, Peter. Fuck Brexit. Fuck Nigel no, Farage. Okay. All right, dude. Well, yeah, look, thanks for the uh, the chat anyway. And yeah, good luck with everything yourself. And yeah, there we go. Cheers, mate.